So, um, and Kelsey will watch you if you erase it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of everything on both sides. Or I'm going to get the x's onto the other side. So now I have y squared plus 6y equals negative 4x minus 1. All right. So the first thing is, just like your formula, if you want x's on one side, y's on the other side, then yeah, separate them. Um, now the next thing is we need to complete the square. Now you might say, why bring the 1 over there? I'll, it'll just kind of show you. It's going to make life a lot easier to put the 1 over there. Because um, what we want to do is we want to write this as our binomial squared. Our y is squared, so we want to make sure our bind, we have created a binomial squared. That is the completing the square. So if you guys remember, to do that, this was kind of like your ax squared plus bx. You take b, divide it by 2, and square it. That equals 6 divided by 2 squared, which equals 9, right? So now you add that 9 to both sides. So we're going to create some parentheses. So I have y squared plus 6y plus 9. You guys get any flashbacks to August when we first went over this? Yeah. I think that's how long ago it was. Then whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Why did you? B is your coefficient of your linear term. B is the, what's the coefficient of my linear term, which is y, in that case. Does that make sense? You know the ax squared plus bx plus c. So b is your coefficient of your linear term. Yeah. Now, it, it doesn't matter. B, it, it, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying the coefficient of x. I'm saying the coefficient of your linear term. Both x and y are your linear term. Y and X over here are your quadratic term. Those are raised to the second power. So it's whatever, the vari whatever your coefficient of your linear term, the variable that's raised to the first power. Because we, we could have Z's here, or W's, or whatever you want to. Now, now what we have done is we have created a perfect square trinomial. That's completing squares, creating a perfect square trinomial. So now we can just factor this down. I will show this to you one more time, but I really get sick of doing this. So I'm not going to factor them down every single time for you. But you guys should know that factors to the perfect, to perfect uh, binomial times the squared, y plus 3 times y plus 3. This becomes negative 4x minus 8. So therefore, this gets to y plus 3 squared. Now, I want you guys to understand. Do you guys see how, that, how the formula is 4p times x minus h? Right? So what we want to do is we got to make our x have a coefficient of 1. So we have to factor out a negative 4, so it's x plus 2. Big key mistake. I can't tell you how many people would say, oh, 4p is equal to negative 4. No, no, no. You've got to factor it out so it's in that same format. But do you guys agree with me that now this is in the same format as that? Yes? OK. So then again, remember, yes, Marty? All right, Marty, are you getting smart with me? Yes, so good job. So therefore, that should be a negative, right? Wow. Good catch. Good job. Thank you. Um, so now we need to identify the vertex. And if you guys remember from last class period, h is always with x, and k is always with y. y. So remember, it's opposite of, opposite of k, opposite of h. So my vertex is going to be 2 comma negative 3. Um, I need to find my focus and my vertex. So I need to say what 4p is equal to, which is equal to negative 4. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. p is equal to negative 1. And again, guys, the difference here is, yeah, it's still negative 4. But if you didn't factor that out, your vertex would be different. right? And that's a huge, big, big issue. So now p is negative 1. So again. Where is those little pictures that we did? Does anybody have those pictures? Nobody has a picture of their parabola? I no, I want a picture of those parabolas. Where'd those go? Huh? No, I'll take one over here. So we know my parabola opens up either to the left or to the right for you, right? Yes. We know that the distance from the vertex to the focus is P. So 
if my vertex is at 2, negative 3, let's graph 2, negative 3. So that's at 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. P is negative 1. So the distance from my vertex to my focus is negative 1. So should negative 1, should I go to the right, negative 1, or should negative 1 represent going to the left, 1? It's the left one, right? So if here's my vertex, that means my focus is right there. Is that B or 6 up in the red? 6. Oh, that B, uh, BX. Does everybody see that? Yes. And then remember, the distance from your vertex to your directrix is the opposite of P. So if I'm going 1 to the left, that means my directrix, I have to go 1 to the right. And then also, last note, if I have a horizontal parabola, my directrix is a vertical line. Does everybody see that? Yes? And my parabola always opens up towards the focus. So just a squint, swoof, quick sketch would make it look like that. I um, just want the opening and correction. Does everybody see that? 